Hey guys, so um, I haven't made a video in a while. Actually, I haven't made a video in four, four, uh, four weeks a month. Uh, I'm off track. I haven't made a video in about a month. Uh, I haven't really made a real video in a little bit over that. Uh, because I've been playing Xbox Halo 3 that I downloaded. Um, but uh, that's beside the point. So anyway, to treat you guys for all your long weeks of waiting, uh, I'm going to get a review on uh, the ca Canon PowerShot a 3100 is digital uh, camera right here and let me just zoom in on this thing and uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the camera itself now this is a 12.1 megapixel uh, camera and basically uh, what that means is that it'll take pictures at 4000 by 300 resolution which is a very high quality uh, resolution there's also modes for um, um, 8 megapixel, 5 megapixel, 2 megapixel, and uh, 0 0.3 megapixel. There's obviously just different sizes for that. There's also widescreen mode that still use, that uses the 4000 by 2248 um, resolution. So let me just go quickly through the camera. The front, on the front, there's a 35 millimeter lens uh, made by Canon. Very nice lens, very high quality pictures. Uh, and it, I mean, I've been using this for a little over a month now. I've taken over 500 pictures with it, and it's a very incredible little camera. On the back, we have a really nice, bright, vibrant screen on there. Check that out right there. That is a beautiful screen, uh, and you can view all your pictures, uh, everything in very good quality. Uh, the only problem with the screen that I find is that in low light conditions, it can be sort of iffy, sort of grainy. That's to be expected uh, in a camera like this. Now, up uh, on the top here, let's get into the features. There's a little uh, scroll wheel here that lets you toggle between the different camera modes. Now, you have the program mode, which is uh, the very top mode. And basically, what you can do here is you can uh, change all the settings on this camera. So, if I go in, you can just press the, the function button in the middle here. And it'll bring up the menu, and uh, this is the menu here. And you can choose all sorts of different uh, f um, things, like you can you can choose uh, the resolution and the quality of your picture. You can choose uh, single shot or uh, continuous shot, which basically is the si the continuous shot is for you know if you want to really capture the action at sports events or whatnot, just hold down the uh, uh, the shutter button uh, and it'll keep taking pictures and then obviously a single shot is just uh, one click one shot hold it down nothing will happen um, and then this is uh, your bright there's your uh, brightness settings here and there's evaluative and then there's center weighted average and there's spot and basically what these are is that uh, they choose the, the brightness evaluative brightness it chooses the brightness based on the overall scene, uh, but if you choose a center weighted average brightness, then it'll choose it based on the center of the scene, uh, and the spot is basically based on the f center frame area, the middle of the shot, uh, it, where, where you're framing it on. Uh, and then you have uh, for your, your color options, there's a there's no no color whatsoever, just normal. Uh, there's vivid, which is, basically emphasizes contrast and color saturation in your pictures makes for very good detailed pictures of uh, I was using it to take pictures of our fire which is really neat uh, it sort of really enhanced the flames uh, and the neutral which basically decreases contrast and color saturation the opposite of vivid uh, sepia tone and black and white and then you have the custom color which you use the the, the display button back here to uh, basically pick your your color settings you can choose your brightness uh, and sharpness and all that. Then there's uh, your um, white, mal white balance. Uh, you have auto white balance, uh, daylight, cloudy, uh, tungsten lighting, uh, fluorescent lighting. Flu fluores uh, there's another fl fluorescent one. There's a fl fluorescent uh, H, which is basically a shooting in daylight for fluorescent lighting. I can't pronounce fluorescent very well, as you can see. Uh, and then fluorescent normally is just for shooting under white light. Uh, and then there's the evaluate white balance, which will basically you just do it by yourself manually. Then there's the ISO 
which is basically for setting up action shots. The higher the ISO, the better it'll be able to freeze the action, less blur. Um, now, the highest is 1600, and the lowest is 80, which is really low ISO. And then there's auto ISO. Um, and that's it for program, basically. Then, if you switch it over here up in the click wheel to auto, uh, then it'll just automatically choose everything for you. There's an easy mode, basically, for just point and shoot, no uh, settings required. There's uh, a portrait mode. There's a landscape mode. There's a night snapshot mode. There's a kids and pets mode. There's an indoor mode. A face self timer, which is really cool. Basically, you'll put your camera over on a tripod, uh, tripod or something. As you can see here, it detects my face uh, if it's doing it right. But it'll basically, uh, if if you're doing it, it'll like let's see if I can hold down halfway. Um, yeah, see, there's a little green box over my face right now. Basically, what that does is it's active face detection. So, um, but what for the uh, for this face self timer thing to work? Basically, if you have a portrait of, uh, well, not really a portrait, but a family photo or something, you have a lot of people in the scene. Uh, you know, the cameraman usually has to set the timer, then run in there, get in position. For this, it'll wait till a new face enters the scene, which will be the camera guy, and then it'll set the timer. So you have that extra time and not worrying about, you know, missing the shot, which is a really neat feature. Also, by the way, uh, another thing is that uh, I just demonstrated this. If you hold down the shutter button halfway, it'll focus the, the frame and get ready for the shot. And then you can just press it all the way to take the picture. Moving on, uh, you have your video mode, which basically, uh, I, I took a video with this, so I'll go a test video. Uh, I put it on YouTube already, and I'll, I'll put a link to that in the video description. Uh, well, as an annotation, probably, or a link, something like that. But um, basically, for a 12 megapixel camera, I mean, it's not HD video, but very good for a digital camera, considering it's not even an SLR camera, it's just a normal point and shoot, which aren't really renowned for their video capabilities. Audio is actually very crisp, very good, very nice at long ranges. Uh, I like the audio on the videos. and. Uh, my only real problem with the video, besides it not being in HD, which isn't really that much of a problem to me, uh, is the fact that you can only use the digital zoom while recording, and you can't use the optical zoom. Um, and as you might know, digital zoom, this has a, a, a I think a 12 time, times digital zoom, and a 4x optical zoom. And the optical zoom is what you want, basically it's just the actual physical movement of the lens when you zoom in or out um, but then the digital zoom is just enhancing the picture basically and just zooming in on the picture which degrades the quality the further you go in only really necessary for uh, you know if you really need to get something up close uh, okay now let's go for the different features there's um over here let's go through the controls this is your these are your two zoom buttons up here uh, here we have uh, this is this button here is the uh, the playback button. So these are all my, these are my pictures on here, uh, and this is to switch between uh, actually playing back your pictures and uh, switching to uh, photo mode. Over here is the face detection. You can kind of turn face detection on or off. I'm gonna turn it on. And then down to here, you have basically all your buttons over here. These are all only used on um, um, program mode, manual mode. Uh, well, most of them are anyway. The bottom one here is used to set a timer and to delete photos while you're viewing them. Uh, this one here is for to set between infinity mode, which takes uh, uh, pictures far away. Uh, normal mode and macro mode. This does have a really nice macro mode. And this one over here is the flash control. Uh, and then down here you have the display, which basically is, uh, will change your display to, if you don't want. It'll have all the cluttering text and stuff on there. It'll it'll also set cer certain options in program mode. Here you have your menu, which basically goes through some uh, basic uh, setup things. Um, so that's all for the software part of this. Uh, hardware wise. Uh, I mean, this is a very sleek camera. As you can see, it's very thin. Uh, check that out. That's that's a really nice uh, low-profile camera there. 
and it, it, it's sort of curvy too, so it's 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 nice to hold. It's pleasant on the hands. I I, I like the grip of it. Um, obviously, it's really nice. It comes with a it comes with a strap already attached, so uh, that's you can just slip on that on your hand and you're ready to go. Um, the screen, as I said, is really nice, wide. Um, takes up a lot of the back. Uh, up here, you have your all your buttons and everything. Very sleek look. And then back down um, at the bottom, you have a tripod mount, obviously. And then you have a spot for the Canon uh, rechargeable battery and an SD card. And here you have the uh, audio video digital out. Uh, you can plug it into your computer. I zoomed in there instead of zooming up. So that's basically my review on the Canon. PowerShot A3100iS. Um, in my opinion, it's really great camera for the price. Not too expensive, uh, by the way. But uh, I mean, it was um, pretty cheap for me.